Sup Freaks, it's your boy Marty Bent here to introduce this episode of Rabbit Hole Recap. Matt and I just had a long trip, over 90 minutes, over an hour and a half. Hit a lot of topics, had a lot of fun. I uh, withheld from drinking on this episode. Shocker. Uh, this episode of Tales, Tales from the Crypt from Ra- of Rabbit Hole Recap is brought to you by our, our good friends at Unchained Capital. You freaks already know all about them. And if you don't know about them, let me tell you a little bit about them. Unchained Capital is a company building financial services for Bitcoiners with security in mind, a security first mindset and collaborative custody in mind. They want to make sure that you guys have control of your Bitcoin as much as possible when using their products. The way they do that is building products like their Volts product. What is that? The Volts product is a product that allows you to engage in a two of three multi-sig quorum with Unchained Capital in which you hold two of three keys so you can always move your UTXOs out of the vault whenever you so please and Unchained holds a third key. If you are ever in a pickle and you only have one key on you and you need Unchained's help to move that UTXO or UTXOs that you're looking to move out of your vault, they are there to sign it for you. Right now it's compatible with Trezor and Ledger. If you heard the conversation we had with Will Cole um, earlier this week that we published, go check it out if you haven't. Uh, Cold card's coming soon. On top of that, they have their collateralized loan program. Friends don't let friends sell Bitcoin. So if you're in a pinch and you're thinking about selling your Bitcoin, you're looking for tax beneficial alternatives, uh, Unchained can uh, use your Bitcoin. You can use your Bitcoin, excuse me, you can use it as collateral to get same day US dollar liquidity. You, know, you put Bitcoin up in a multi sig quorum, you have one key, Unchained has one key, and a third party has another key. And so you can always check to make sure your UTXOs aren't being rehypothecated uh, and you use your Bitcoin as collateral to get U.S. dollar liquidity. And as long as you're paying back that loan and keeping your collateral margin in check, you do not have to sell your Bitcoin. On top of that, they've got incredible uh, open source tools on the market, including their their multi-sig quorum in the form of Caravan. They just released a new version of Caravan, which is much, much more robust than the original implementation. On top of that, they're working on Hermit, which we talked about Will Cole as well. Slip 39 uh, in their incredible blog series highlighted by Parker Lewis's Gradually Then Suddenly, which is great fodder for normies. Uh, if you're looking to introduce people to Bitcoin, Parker's series particularly is something that I send to a lot of people. So go to www.unchained-capital.com to check all this out. That's www.unchained-capital.com. Tell them Marty sent you. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends at the Cash App. They're helping you do many things. They're helping you stack sats, send sats, receive sats, DCA into stat, sats. What, what's DCA? Dollar cost average. You can set it and forget it in the Cash App now. You want to buy on a uh, steady cadence? Cash App is letting you do that. You can set up daily buys, weekly buys, monthly buys in the Cash App. Sats is the standard. Instead of buying fractions of Bitcoin, you're buying whole sats. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and on top of that, they have Cash App investing. Bad day for stonks. Bad day for stonks. If you're a buy the, if you're a BTFD. If you're buying the fucking dip uh, and you have the Cash App, Cash App Investing is letting you buy as little as $1. You can stack slivers of stonks, okay? If you don't want to buy a whole stonk, if you're not sure the, the dip is going to go further or stop and you, you don't want to buy a whole stonk, you can buy as little as $1 via Cash App Investing. Because this is directly connected to your bank account for the sats and the stonks, there's no four to five day waiting period. You can start investing and stacking today. Cash App may even be your bank account. As you freaks notice that they have, uh, they have what? What's the word I'm looking for right now? Totally, totally falling out of my mind. Routing numbers and account numbers. There we go. Account numbers. Come on, Marty. Think. So Cash App can be your bank account now. You can direct deposit your bank a check. Your bank a check. <laughs> your can't speak. Sorry, freaks. You can direct deposit your paycheck into the Cash App now with their accounting numbers and routing numbers. Uh, Cash App Investing is subsidiary of Square, member SIPC. And as always, as always, make sure you use the code stacking sats. That's one word, S-T-A-C-K-I-N-G-S-A-T-S. You're going to get $10 when you download the Cash App. And $10 is going to go to our good friends at Owls Lacrosse. That's Owls Lacrosse. Woo! 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 
Marty Zal. What'd you think? Download the Cash App. Enjoy this rip. Take care. You've had a dynamic where money's become freer than free. If you talk about a Fed just gone nuts, all, all the central banks going nuts. So it's all acting like safe haven. I believe that in a world where central bankers are tripping over themselves to devalue their currency, Bitcoin wins. In the world of fiat currencies, Bitcoin is the victor. I mean, that's part of the bull case for Bitcoin. If you're not paying attention, you probably should be. Uh, wait, restart. Oh my uh, god. No, wait. Add it to did the you, outtakes. Did you hit restart yet? No, I'm recording. All right, I am too. We're good. Fucking Marty. My bad. What's up? We just recorded a, a podcast, basically. Just talking, shooting the shit before we hit record. Marty, when are we going to record in person again? Uh, Maybe next week. I'm, I'm down. Come. Let's fucking I'm do gonna it. I'm going to come back and get my shit at some point next week. When and does I your lease end? At the end of the month. Ah, good timing. Yeah. Uh, well, we broke our lease. They let you so, break your lease? I mean, it cost us some money, but we, we broke it. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's annoying. It's annoying. But I'll be back next week, and I'll probably be staying for a few days. Okay, so uh, we'll record next week in person. Yes. Freaks, you got to hold them to it. And I'm trying to get uh, Antoine... Riard, I'm butchering his last name, who did, uh, he was working at Chain Code. He's about to go home to France, I believe, at the end of the month. We're going to try and get an in person with him as well, drink some wine, talk about what him and, and Gleb have been working on uh, with dilation attacks and the, the coin pool idea. Boss. Um, so look out for that, freaks. We'll talk about coin pool a little bit here. Before we get into the nitty gritty, as always, got to check out Clark Moody's dashboard. Price is sitting at nine thousand two hundred sixty dollars bit of a crash today uh black height is currently six hundred thirty four thousand two hundred sixty five uh we are estimated to have another retarget uh upwards difficulty adjustment of about 18.1 percent we're 775 blocks away from that uh so we're pretty far into this uh difficulty epoch and it seems like a lot of hash rate has come on the network since that 15 percent drop a couple weeks ago or last week excuse me and uh so the next retarget's scheduled right now for june 16th so five days from now uh right now what's the gbtc premium Woo! gbtc very very hot in the news right now um where is that on the dashboard it's right on the top it's the first box Oh, it's 38.2%. It's pretty high. Shows Clark's priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it deserves to be that high up there, Clark, but it is an interesting, it's an interesting number. Yeah. It usually hovers around like 25%. Seeing it around 40 is pretty, pretty crazy. There's some news on that we're going to talk about as well. Three Arrows owns a lot of that product. Um, Stop teasing our list, Marty. Get through the dashboard. Uh Average fees, the reward is hovering around 5.31% right now. Uh, next block is even lower at 2.45%. So it seems like activity on the chain is decreasing quite a bit. Fee estimates, you can get an immediate, get your transaction included in the next block for 24 sats per byte. And if you're willing to wait an hour, it's 19 sats per byte, and after that, it's only one sat per byte. Pretty cheap to send transactions right now. So if you're thinking about doing it, thinking about coin joining, running something through Whirlpool, pretty good time to start. It's because we overcorrected down, right? Like the next difficulty adjustment goes up, right? Yeah, I mean, it goes up by almost 20%. It feels like blocks uh, are coming really quick lately. Yeah, at one point this week, I don't know if it's still true uh, as we record right now, but uh, it was on pace to be the quickest difficulty epoch to date. Right now, blocks are coming in about 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, that's quick as fuck. Yeah. Um, it's uh, hey, it's the beauty of the network. Difficulty adjusted down. And again, like I said, I do think what actually ended up happening is those S9s 
were unplugged and, and sent to people with cheaper electricity and got replugged in. And we're seeing a combination of that and new hardware come online. It's a theory. But, yeah, it's a good theory. I mean, I, in the mining um, chats that I'm in as well, I, I know a lot of people that have been doing that and talking about plugging in S9s. Uh, Samurai Whirlpool unspent capacity at the moment is 1,205 and a half Bitcoin. The unspent value is $11.2 million. There have been 5,943 cycles in the last 30 days, and uh, the TX0 volume of the last 30 days has been 577.82 BTC. So Whirlpool still going. Are we on pace to break records this month, or is it slowing down? It's pretty early to make that call, but it's ripping. The the point five pool, the fifty million sat pool, has really been ripping hard lately. Yeah, we started some drama with that dropping the Chris Belcher episode yesterday. A lot of uh, a lot of people that shared that that episode started getting in, in a, a flame war. I don't think it was the episode, which was a fantastic conversation with Chris. I think it was people's reaction to the episode that started some things. Uh, I just this idea that 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 coin joins are broken and coin coin swaps fix them is it's a ridiculous premise. Like if, if you are bullish on coin swaps actually being implemented successfully by Chris, which I am, but let's be honest here. They haven't been implemented yet. It's just a spec right now. It's in the design phase. If you are, then you should also be bullish on coin join today because the biggest hurdle to adoption of coin join right now is this perceived risk that in the future at some point you won't be able to spend transactions with coin join history but if that becomes even more unrealistic if you have coin swaps right like it, if you're sitting on coin join utxos that for some reason you can't spend which i don't even think is a realistic concern to begin with um and i practice what i preach like my whole fucking stash is coin joined like then you can coin swap after the fact, right? So like it should be the opposite, really. It should make you more bullish on coin joins today that we have coin swaps and other things that will 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 occur in the future that we'll have at our disposal that will make tainting coins and trying to do blacklisting and whatnot that much more difficult. I agree. I think the uh, the verbiage of fixing uh, instead of improving. Is a, is a bit of a, a stretch there. I think it definitely improves on privacy overall and is a step forward in addition to coin joints. Um, so if you haven't checked out that episode with Chris, go check it out. I think my The thing I took away from it and what I'm most excited about is to see if he uh, is successful in bringing implementation to market that works. Does it lower that, that perceived threshold that we talk a lot about on this show? Absolutely of, does of how many people uh, do you need to be using that software to, to give everybody uh, basically default anonymity or the uh, at defeated least, heuristics? At least plausible deniability, like enough plausible deniability to make the heuristics broken. And I'm just yeah. bullish on the fact that Chris is a fucking boss. And to just to see him hustling and see like how driven he is to make Bitcoin more private it's just fucking awesome, right? Like we need we need a million Chris Belchers. Like it's just fantastic to have him and he's so humble. Dude's going to change the world. He's going to change the world and I'm just happy to just do my small part in just promoting his work and and trying to support on the awareness and education side. Me as well. Me as well and hey, he's getting noticed for that hard work too. I guess we'll jump down the list a little bit. Uh, Human Rights Foundation started a privacy-focused Bitcoin dev program, and Chris was the first recipient of a $50,000 grant. So Fucking huge. Uh, huge. Uh, he's still raising money via his page that we linked to in the episode that we dropped yesterday. But again, I've said this before, Human Rights Foundation is my favorite alphabet soup agency out there. They seem to have skin in the game and actually be fighting for uh, the mission that they put on their website and not just LARPing and and being a huge uh, sort of bureaucratic. Well, that's because uh, they're not front. an alphabet suit agency. They're a fucking nonprofit. 
There's others like there's other nonprofits that are I know, but usually when you say like alphabet soup agency, yeah, you're talking yeah, about like FDA d- or CIA or FBI yeah, or yeah. DEA or IRS. These are federal agencies. These are government agencies. Alphabet soup organization. Yeah, Sorry. fair enough. I, I fucking love the work they're doing. Uh Gladstein's a boss. He's one of our boys. Uh, it's fantastic to see them do this privacy focused grant program. As we've said on the pod before, it's great to see these grant programs in general. Uh, they do have another grant coming up for another privacy focused dev, uh, that has not been disclosed yet. So looking forward to that. Um, and they're going to continue raising money and provide it towards privacy focused work. Um, so if you do have a project you're working on that's privacy focused, you should go and submit that to them. Another thing to note is they are the first real way to donate uh, towards Bitcoin development in a tax-deductible way because they're a 501c3 organization or whatever it is. 501c3, right? I no, think c3. That's c- what I 501c3. said. 501c3. 501c3. Yeah, you're right. Uh, whatever it is, it's the tax-deductible way to donate. So that's fucking huge. I, that, that, that's like a really big deal. I think you could do it through DCI previously, but DCI doesn't let you do just Bitcoin-focused, and they take a decent cut out of it for management. So this is a way bigger deal, and HRF isn't actually taking a cut for management. They take 5%, but it just goes towards their, their nor- the, the Bitcoin advocacy that they're doing anyway, right? So you're, it, everything goes to Bitcoin. 95% goes to outside devs and 5% goes to like the work that Gladstein's been doing and the workshops and the presentations and stuff like that. So th- it, this is this is massive. Shout out to the Human Rights Foundation. If you are looking for an organization to donate to that helps Bitcoin, consider donating. Um, before we get further into the list, we have a shout out. Oh man, this guy's such a scumbag, dude. He... Our, our, that scumbag Al, I believe it's him. It could have been somebody else acting on behalf of him. Uh, bought a shout out, so I have to read it. And he's he's trying to act like I bought a shout out for my own show. So this dude's an idiot. One. It's <laughs> obvious that I'm. These are not my words, but he wrote them, assuming that I would I would write them or read them uh, in in my own voice and with sincerity. So here it goes. We're gonna listen to. Uh, some fake news here right now. When I look back upon my lacrosse career, there's no one who influenced me so positively as my coach, Mr. Albert LaCroix. His wisdom, skill, and selfless care for our team was the stuff of legends, hand to God. Not to mention the team moms always wanted a piece of that action. It would have got it if some snitch hadn't called the school district and found out there was no record of anyone under that name in their files. I am stating this of my own free will and not because someone bought a shout out. And even if they did, it sure wasn't at lacrosse underscore Al. In closing, the taxonomic family Strigidae can kiss my ass. I guess that's what owls belong to. Strigidae. Yeah, I have to look that up. I think it's a safe assumption. Anyway, thanks for the shout out, Al. We appreciate your support. Yeah, it is. It is. That's a good assumption. I was like, what the fuck is this? We look forward to seeing you in Dallas. Uh, yes, black tie event in Dallas, uh, for the Bitbox boom conference. We're going to do our live show. And then unfortunately I had to stand next to that dirt bag in person in a tux and, uh, have a, a faux award show. It's going to be all in jest too. There's nobody's getting serious awards. I don't think, I think it's all a big, a big, uh, roast, if you will. It's real. If you believe in it. Anything's real if you believe in it. Should we? We should jump into the vulnerabilities. We're a little bit into the show now, and I like to front load them. Well, let's just make our quick correction. Last week, our tweet was wrong, uh, and some assumptions we made in the podcast about Shift Crypto. Uh, Shift Crypto is unwinding their original company, but they have built and structured another company in which they will continue the development of their hardware wallets and support of their hardware wallets and i was wrong we were wrong to we weren't wrong but we were just speculating that well your tweet was inflammatory marty my bad i think Uh, on the podcast we were very clear that we were speculating based on 
the fact that they hadn't mentioned the liquidation at all in the blog post. And now they've adjusted the blog post after the episode to show that they are restructuring and they're, they're creating an, they created a new company for, for longer term st- stability, whatever the hell's going on over there. They needed this new company and they, they intend fully intend. They've told us to support their hardware wallets going forward. Yes. They were not offloading, uh, wallets during liquidation that would not be supported i mean they will be supported though exactly they will be supported they did close their own web shop which i think we said last episode as well but they were they were linking to resellers that were still selling which is where we had the issue um but yeah anyway it's good to see that they're going to continue supporting this hardware wallet and they, they they intend to release a bunch of new features uh so we'll we'll see how that plays out we shall see. All right. Two, the disclosures. Bit143 back in the news. Bitcoin Optech came out with their newsletter this week, incredible newsletter, uh, basically explained um, the fee overpayment attack on multi-input SegWit transactions and talked a little bit about Bit143 and how this stuff can be avoided in the future. And what was surprising to me, I didn't realize until I read this newsletter, was that this has been well known for three years. This type of attack. Yeah. Um, so this is the vulnerability that we discussed last week that uh, Trezor and Salim disclosed uh, through, a, through a blog post uh, without notifying Core and a bunch of other wallet providers. Um, so we, I think we said that you should just hold off if you don't have to. It's, it's, it involves when you spend. Um, and we said you should hold off using your hardware wallet to spend transactions in the in the interim. Um, since then, Shift Crypto has released an update. Um, Trezor has released an update, which we we knew about last last week, which we said broke a bunch of software wallets. Those software wallets have still not at, re-added support for Trezor with the new firmware. So if you want to use pretty much any software wallet, except for Unchained, I believe, um, I, I believe you still need to hold off on the Trezor firmware update. Um, Cold uh, Ledger released a firmware update that gives you a warning. Uh, that's how they plan on trying to mitigate it. It gives you like a little warning message. Cold Card uh, should be releasing an update either tomorrow or Monday um, with their own method of mitigating it. Uh, and, and that should also come with other additional features. Um, the big one is BIP. 85 support, uh, which I was going to discuss later, but we might as well just bring it up now. Uh, that allows you to basically create child seeds from your cold card seed. So all you have to do is back up your cold card effectively, and and you, and you can generate seeds for other wallets from that seed, uh, which sounds dope as fuck, right? I'm like super excited about that. Imagine you have like a a phone wallet or something, instead of having to back up that as well, you just back up the cold card and you can use a a child seed for the, for the phone wallet. And if the phone wallet gets compromised, your cold card doesn't get compromised and your backups are all already set up because they're your cold card backups. Yeah. We first mentioned, mentioned this back in April when the PR was, uh, was pulled the pull request was pulled when the PR was, was made for the BIP. Um, so yeah, this seems like it's becoming more, is it, is that been merged and was that merged into version 0.20? Uh, no, but it doesn't need to be because it was merged into cold cards firmware, but it, uh, that, that firmware hasn't been released. So I'm not a hundred percent positive that this BIP 143 mitigation vulnerability mitigation that is about to be released will be included. The BIP85 stuff will be included, but I'm like 99% sure. But either way, um, Cold Card figured out a way over the last week, because keep in mind, they weren't aware of it until uh, basically right before we recorded last RHR. They figured out a way to mitigate, for, for most situations, mitigate this vulnerability without breaking support for like all the software wallets that support it. Uh, which is really great to see. I mean, like one of the issues here is like the way Trezor did it is 
you you need to have a full node. You need full transaction information in in order to support it, uh, and that's just not possible for a lot of people. Uh, you know, obviously everyone should run a full node, but that's one of the issues that BTC Pay has, that Wasabi has, uh, that Electrum has, is that they don't have all that information, and that's why support has been broken. Um, so, so Cold Card figured out a clever way to mitigate that. Um, full details will be released with the firmware, so I don't, I don't want to. They're still testing it out. I don't want to like uh, jump the gun here a little bit. So you can read that blog post when they do release it. But keep on the lookout; it should be happening either tomorrow or Monday. And then the other thing is, just as a clarification here, there's a this is a this is a complex attack, right? And like people shouldn't be scared out of hardware wallet usage because of an attack like this. Like it's way easier to attack a hot wallet. Like if if you can pull off this attack on a hardware wallet user, you can absolutely pull off this attack on someone who's just using a hot wallet, a software hot wallet, because it needs it needs to compromise the software that you're using the hardware wallet with. So it's just a really important thing for people to just keep in mind here is that you're still more protected in a hardware wallet situation. Yeah, and there are um, s- solutions being worked on to this. So this was actually brought up uh, in 2018 by Johnson Lau. A long-term solution to the attack is to change the transaction digest so that each signature commits to the value of all UTXOs being spent in the transaction. So you would... The, the attack basically is you sign, you try to sign the transaction, then your hardware wallet says, hey, it didn't work, you have to sign it again. And then when you go to sign it again, the malicious software is changing your your fee amount to a higher amount so that they're screwing you over. And this only um, affects SegWit transactions. And yes. this is also why we said in the last episode, you mitigate it, you can mitigate it today, and probably best practice in general um, if you use a different device to broadcast, so the, the, the device, you, you have a computer or a phone that you're building the partially signed Bitcoin transaction with, then you're transferring it with, by micro SD card or USB to the cold card, then you're signing it. Then if you broadcast it from a different device, then they need to compromise, they need to compromise both devices to do it. Yeah. And so Johnson's uh, solution would basically make you uh, commit to uh, all the UTXs in a transaction before you send. So if you didn't send it successfully and ask you to send again and the fee has changed, that UTXO has changed, it won't go through. And there's a BIP out for this, but uh, it's a specification of Taproot. So BIP 341 um, would solve this uh, with Taproot and... um, it would become safer for stateless signers like hardware wallets to sign for Taproot UTXOs without evaluating previous transactions. So Taproot fixes this. Taproot does fix this. Um, that's a good segue. It's not next on the list, but uh, we mentioned it in the beginning. Or do you want to go through all the no the up? Do your pivot. Yeah. Uh, so another privacy <laughs> solution has been brought to market by our good friends. Gleb and Antoine, uh, who have been at Unchained, um, and it's called CoinPool, and it's a second layer privacy solution that does depend on Taproot getting implemented. But it's cool to see that these guys, Coins, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see that these guys are working on uh, something, and they are. I mean, they just presented this to the Bitcoin Dev mailing list. They're still getting uh, feedback on whether or not it's possible or probable. But it does seem pretty cool just reading through the spec. Basically, um, you would create a Merkle tree with a bunch of uh, with a bunch of leaves on it. I guess the terminology is it's that a big allow, ass taproot multi sig. Yeah, and it would allow you to basically get anonymity or more privacy uh, via second layers like Lightning, uh, Bitcoin vaults, uh, DLCs. This would help provide better privacy for those as well and what's the one thing i want to say yeah it would actually be cheaper as well uh, and it would help reduce the amount of utxos uh, uh that are that are used as you can uh, do a lot more with less especially with taproot yeah it's a scalability improvement too if if it works yeah yeah so shout cool. out to those guys cool to see 
right? We want to see more more privacy things. Um, yes, it's being worked on slowly but surely. Shout out to Gleb and uh, Gleb and Antoine. Last week they they announced uh, the dilation attacks and explained those, and this week they're they're providing second layer privacy solutions, putting the team on their back there. You uh, you just got updated to this. You talked to Evan. Zeus version 0.3.0 beta 1 is out, has been released, and it adds Sea Lightning Spark and L&D Hub. And you were explaining to me Z Lightning Spark is basically uh, an implementation of Sea Lightning. In it's, a it's, a specific back end. Language. it's a back end that Sheshek made uh, that allows you. So now you can integrate with that or you can integrate with L&D Hub. Uh, they already had Sea Lightning REST support. They added KeySense support last release. Um, they obviously have LND support. Uh, so Zeus is quickly becoming the go-to mobile Lightning wallet for people who run a node at home or at their office or wherever the fuck they run it. Uh, so it's really good to see. We love Evan. You know, I, we do the Bitcoin Citadel workshops with him. Uh, great dude. So just fantastic to see and zeus is on f droid if you're running graphene so you can download it really easily or if you're running any android you can have f droid uh so dope if you're using zeus upgrade more functionalities are there uh they're only another... one of two mobile wallets that support key send it's breeze and zeus breeze obviously is running a light node on your well a full lightning node but a light bitcoin node on your phone and Zeus connects to your own node. Uh, but they both support KeySend, which is cool to see. Shout out to Evan and team building that out. Marty, are you so drinking with me today? I'm not drinking. No. Bingo! Let's go. I, am, oh, I, I already take... popped the cork. Oh, let me put the cork back in just to make more. <laughs> Don't cater to the bingo playing crowd. I didn't <laughs> think I, I, I did it intentionally until after I said it. Then I remembered it was on the bingo board. But you said you're not drinking with me, correct? No, I'm drinking coffee. Why? And, uh, you're taking a break from drinking? Taking a break from drinking. My sister has joined my wife and I to, to nanny our son for the summer, and uh, she's been away for quite some time, so we've been catching up over drinks. I'm drinking dinner. Basil Hayden's Kentucky Straight Bourbon, and it's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> He's choked on my water. First time you haven't drank Macallan in quite some time. Yeah, this was a birth. I ran out of Macallan, so this was a birthday <laughs> gift that I had sitting around. So now I'm, I'm almost done with this bottle. I'm going to have to go on a run. Uh, you're bringing the Mictors to the fucking live show next week. I will bring the Mictors. There you go. Hold them to it, uh, freaks. Um, Shit's yeah. delicious. It is delicious. It is uh, It's strong, too. It's so good. Um, speaking of so good, Electrum Personal Server version 0.2.1.1 was released. Uh, Chris Belcher previously mentioned released that. Apparently, it was a quick release after version 0.2.1.0 bug fix uh, has been a bug has been fixed that was causing uh, some personal servers to crash in certain instances. Yeah. Uh, this- so 0.2. 1.0 added a bunch of speed and performance improvements, but it also added a bug where Electrum crashed. And so then they released, well, Chris released 0.2.1.1, which fixes the bug. So if you lose, use Electrum personal server, consider upgrading. <sighs> I feel like you're about to get heated. This happened right after... I posted the episode last week. I actually got a um, a DM from one of the the block guys. Oh, me too. You got advance notice. Yeah, but uh, they didn't tell you what it was. They're like, "You're about to be furious." Did they tell you that? Is that how you got it? I got shared the link and was like, um, and they were like, ah, "I wish, I wish this would have made it for RHR." Well, I got, I got, uh, I got DM like 15 minutes before they posted and it was like matt just make sure you're sitting down in 15 minutes yeah shout out to doge toshi over at the block steven um yeah so coinbase it has become just to be clear doge toshi did not tell me ahead of time so don't get him in trouble over at the block this 
he told me after it was released, he shared the link. There you go. I know. I just didn't want it to be conflated there. I did, you know, okay. I, li- I like the kid. I don't want it to be conflated. Yeah. This is an article by Michael McSweeney. Coinbase wants to sell blockchain analysis software to the IRS DEA a year after its Neutrino acquisition. And we talked about this last year, Neutrino. Um, what would is... you say they're selling? analysis software no they're selling surveillance tools marty they're selling spy software to the the u.s government fuck their headline fuck their headline uh i mean all right back to whatever we talked about this last (laughs) year when it first came out so they're going by coinbase analytics now but they're formerly known as neutrino and before neutrino they were known as the hacking team or a huge port the the guys from the hacking team exactly. who were fuckers Huge. created Neutrino the company. So they were, Neutrino was I'll, never formally known as the will, hacking team. Will you will you let me explain this? Okay, please? sorry. Continue. You, you jump again. Continue. So basically, Coinbase is selling uh, your personal data to the IRS and DEA, and you, it's just probably safe to assume that they're selling all the information of their users to these departments. There was a in a uh apparent i mean not apparent somebody hopped in my mentions who was claiming to be on the coinbase engineering team and said that uh they're not sharing user data but i find that almost impossible to believe well no uh, it's uh it's like an intentionally ambiguous statement right so they're feeding all the information they know into their analysis software but they're not specifically selling, you know, Coinbase data. And and besides, but they're not, they, they haven't said any of that shit officially. Like, you can't just have some random engineer guy or whatever. He's, he's full of shit. You know, he gives you the open finance bullshit. I saw you invited him on the podcast. Twice. Um, he, did not, he did not respond to the invitation. You know, if, if you had me on that episode with him, like, there would be nothing productive. I'm just he can go fuck himself. That's as far as I'm I'm concerned. Like they they're all complicit. If if you it's one thing if you didn't know about it, but if you know about it now at this point, uh, and you don't leave that company, if you don't if you don't quit Coinbase and go go to greener pastures, like you're complicit. That's that as far as I'm concerned, you're not for open finance or whatever bullshit buzzwords you want to say. Like that's all fucking garbage. Uh, actions speak louder than words. And and this idea that like okay, if you're working at Coinbase and you absolutely need the job, and you can't get a job somewhere else, sure, fine. But that's not... The majority of people working at Coinbase can go wherever the fuck they want in this space. Like, the Coinbase still carries a lot of weight in Silicon Valley. Uh, these guys are getting paid big numbers. They're not, they're not living paycheck to paycheck. There's no sympathy here or there in that regard. Completely agree. It's getting to the point. I mean, not getting to the point. It's been at the point for a while in my books. Brian Armstrong... Barmstrong, that naked mole rat, has been uh, <laughs> trying to attack Bitcoin. You did for call quite him a naked time. mole rat last last episode <laughs> before it dropped, but before yeah. the news dropped. My naked mole rat senses were tingling. Um, yeah, I mean he supported Bitcoin Classic, Bitcoin XT, Segwit Two X. Uh, he just announced, dude, they launched eighteen new coins on the exchange yesterday. One of which was Digibyte. No, I Are think they fucking- said they were planning on announcing it, but yeah. Whatever the they were announcement, they were planning on adding it. Yeah, pre-announced. Digibyte, Digibyte. That's like behind Dogecoin. That's probably like the worst unit. Bias they added Oh My Go. Existed. Like they added a bunch of. Go- it's designed to just allow allow all their VC buddies to dump all their fucking token bags on retail. But, but that's least- besides the point. You know, like this is not coming from like a Bitcoiner perspective. Like this is this is just. They are fucking hypocrites. You know, Brian, first of all, who hasn't tweeted since all this news broke. He's just completely radio silent. Um, Virtue signals about Black Lives Matter. And now he's selling spy software, spy fucking tools to the DEA. Like, is there any organization you want to talk about three letter fucking alphabet soup agencies? Is there any organization that has fucked over black people more than the DEA? Probably not. I can't think of one. No, DEA and the CIA in conjunction. Uh, I mean, pretty well documented that the CIA embedded crack cocaine in black neighborhoods to sow to strife, and the DEA was the enforcer of that stuff. So I can't imagine imagine anything worse for the black community either. 
and Brian Armstrong is a virtue signaling LARPer. That dude does not give a fuck about Bitcoin or open finance. He, like, if he would have it his way, everybody would use Coinbase and their wallets and their services to interact with crypto, quote unquote. You see my open finance meme? (laughs) No, what was it? It was a bunch of DEA agents and said open finance on the top powered by Coinbase trademark. Yeah. It's fucking I mean, powerful. That's what, it, that's what their version of open finance is, is using their services. And they're, yeah, they're just LARPing and Hypocrites. clinging on to these means. Very hypocritical. And, so go delete your Coinbase account, people. Well, a lot of people are doing it. That was a segue I was getting to is uh, you you tweeted it. 22, they had a net outflow of 22,000 coins this time last week, which is the largest or second largest on record, I believe. Um, so it seems like... Uh, some users are actually taking action and getting off the platform again if you are still on there know that they're selling uh, not selling your data but they're running your data through an analytic system that they're selling to the DEA and IRS so it's probably in their hands and that's the beauty of Bitcoin it's a bearer instrument that allows you to take uh, control over your UTXOs whenever you want to and you can vote with your feet and leave Coinbase. We talk about voting to leave the traditional system uh, and getting into Bitcoin, but even within Bitcoin, you can really vote with your your dollars or where you hold your UTXOs. Hopefully, you're running those through coin joins by when you move them and uh, taking possession of your keys, at least for part of your stack, so that you have full sovereignty over that. But again, hopefully. And we talked about it last week. That's why we were talking about Coinbase last week is because how many coins they have control of. A million of minus a million. 20K. No, okay, just just to keep in mind here, freaks. First of all, I have a lot of respect for you people, okay? So I assume the majority of you weren't using Coinbase already. Second thing is, I assume the majority of you weren't keeping your coins on Coinbase if you were using Coinbase, not your keys, not your coins. Third thing, if you delete your account, KYC is forever. They have to keep... A lot of that information for the Bank Secrecy Act anyway. Who knows what they're deleting and what they're not deleting. You've, they, they already have that information. You're not getting rid of it by deleting it. So just keep that in mind. There is also, fourth thing, there's an option in Coinbase when you delete your account to delete all of your data. Are they going to delete all of your data? No one fucking knows. But at least click it, right? You might as well. At least it puts them in a bind if they don't, if they don't delete your data ultimately. Uh, fifth thing, as Marty said, even if you withdraw, they know your withdrawal address. It's going into, it's going into that spy tool as well. That withdrawal address and the information associated with it is going into the spy tool. So if you, if you don't use CoinJoin, if you don't run your own node after that fact, your future transactions and, and if you commingle past transactions can be linked back to you. Uh, and even if you do use CoinJoin, it is not perfect. If you fuck something up, you you will be exposed there as well. So just keep all of these things in mind as you process this. But at the end of the day, fuck Coinbase. Just you know, vote with your feet, as as Marty said. Fuck them. It's not worth it. Don't don't use them. Yeah, let's get that let's get that total Bitcoin held by Coinbase down. Let's get to at least half a mil. Let's let's set uh, a a goal to get it to at least half a mil by this time next year. Uh, never going to happen. Hey, but I love you. Dude, freaks. You'd, be, you'd be surprised. You said you have a lot of, I have a lot of respect for the freaks too, but I also got a lot of personal DMS and emails <laughs> of freaks admitting that they had stuff on Coinbase. So I think the number's yeah. higher than you expect. So did I, so did I, I love you freaks. It's okay. <laughs> it's, you know, well, I was a Coinbase customer at one point, you know, it, it is say. what it is. Hey, I mean, again, this is why you never have heroes in this space. Like, I was one of the biggest Coinbase shills. Like Brian Armstrong was never my hero, though. No, neither. Neither he was, was preemptively mad, slayed. The app was a uh, was a great way to get into Bitcoin. But anyway, it was simple. I don't have updated Glassnode information. Someone did post, which I thought was ironic, and he's got a point um, that I was slamming Coinbase for chain analysis software that they were selling spy software. Let's be frank. Um, while using chain analysis software to do it, which was Glassnode, right? Uh, but you're they're 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 absolutely correct. There's there's no, there's nothing to be said besides that. 
But the one thing that, that is cool about Glassnode, um, which I'm now a paying subscriber for because I wanted that chart. I, I wanted that. You couldn't get... The, they have free tools, but you can you can get the chart if you pay for it. Um, there's, there's something to be said about the fact that I could fucking subscribe for $39 a month. Uh, you try subscribing to Coinbase's spy tools or chain analysis spy tools or elliptic spy tools. You can't. It's not. They don't. They don't give public access to it, um, and that just shows where their motivation is. Their motivation is to hide their capabilities from both you and their competitors while they sell it to authoritarians. And complaining about it is pretty much useless. Like we should build tools to make them fucking obsolete. But at the same time, if you're running a fucking service for retail to on ramp into into Bitcoin, there's a major conflict of interest if, if you're also selling spy tools to people. So so I actually rank this way worse than something like chain analysis or elliptic or all of these motherfuckers. Because they yeah, who who's the customer and who's the product? Right. All of a sudden, the U.S. government is the customer and anyone using Coinbase is the product. Completely agree. Get get the hell off Coinbase if you haven't already. Wise up. Wise up. Naked mole rats. Never trace. Never trust a naked mole rat. They can't be trusted. They're schemy, slimy people who don't know how to say Bitcoin. So let's talk about I got only say crypto. I got three positive links in a row here now. After this this Coinbase bullshit, right? We have this amazing fucking write up by Diverter BTC to start uh, on using mining to obtain KYC free Bitcoin. We've talked about this on the pod before. It is the ultimate way of 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 getting of stacking sats with with limited third parties, right? You do have to have a limited trust in your pool that you choose, but you can connect to it through a Tor or a VPN. And you don't have to provide them any personal information, and you can withdraw frequently. So it is trust minimized. He gave a fantastic write-up about it. Yes, depending on your electricity, you will be ending up paying a, a premium. But like, look, at the end of the day, if it's 30%, 20% premium over buying Bitcoin, that's, I think that's well worth it for, for no KYC, to have no KYC attached to your, to your stack. Yeah, I mean, to each their own. It's uh, certainly, I mean, that's the intention uh, behind Great America Mining. We just want to mine as much Bitcoin as possible, as privately as possible. Um, and yeah, I mean, the the tutorial created by Diverter BTC is very thorough. It's 20 pages. Isn't it fantastic? Into, it goes into very minute detail about what you need to do, what you need to pay attention to, and yeah, so if you're sitting somewhere, maybe living on a river, uh, and you're able to get cheap electricity, I think this is the best way to to get into Bitcoin without KYCing your coins. It's very easy to connect to pools. Um, you have a lot of cheap hardware on secondary markets if you're willing to wait a little bit. Um, S9s are going for dirt cheap right now, and if you have free energy, you can definitely... Um, you can definitely eke some gains out of those. But, but even if you don't have cheap electricity or free electricity, like if you can get to break even, if you could get to 10% loss, right? There, there, there's a balance here, right? Like they're, they're, for the no KYC, there's definitely value. There's definitely value in it. Like the, this idea, and we've heard this in Bitcoin for way too long, that like you're always better off not buying ASICs if you're not a professional. Yeah, um, well, is is faulty, right? Do you not agree that it's it's faulty? Like if 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 you lose ten percent, if you lose fifteen, twenty percent, whatever, like the, you're that's the premium you're paying for better privacy with your stack. No, I agree. I agree. If you're if you if you want it that bad, mining is a great way to do it. And just be wary of your energy prices because the premium may get higher and higher depending on the price per kilowatt hour of the energy source that you're using. Um. And that's an opportunity cost you have to weigh as an individual, um, but highly recommended mining. And the mining is just like fun in general. Uh, it's you, you get to learn a lot more about Bitcoin once you get your hands dirty in the mining world. And um, 
What I want to see is ASIC be wary. stores it's, where you can buy without with cash. You know, it's like, loud. Be wary. It's loud. Uh, it it produces a lot of heat. So if you're going to do it, I mean, it's in the it's in diverters um, uh, tutorial, but just be be aware. There's a lot of uh, stuff that comes with it. And it, these, this stuff exists like ASIC stores for cash. not really what? Like, I know I want to like walk down Broadway in New York city and like walk into a store that sells ASICs for cash. You can just hop into a telegram group and find somebody selling them and do it easily. Yeah. But that's different. That's different than walking into a store and buying it. Right. Yeah. You don't have physically have to leave your couch. You can just, <laughs> no, there's more information attached to the purchase. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's agree. Uh, uh-huh. and if, if, if you live in cold weather, right, then, then the ASICs offset your heat bill a little bit. They're basically little electric heaters. They give off so much fucking heat, but the noise is really annoying. It is a, yeah. a really annoying whining noise. Zzz. You don't, you don't Ooh. want it running in your studio apartment. Yeah. Definitely not. Your, your, Definitely your not. girlfriend will leave you. Yeah. So, I mean, there is a. Uh... I think Diverter gives soundproofing techniques that he uses. He's got his set up in like a cooler, which is like crazy. But or at a, least one of them. A lot of colleges, yeah, you can figure out like mineral oil setups to reduce sound. Uh, that'll be more expensive for you. A lot of colleges still offer uh, just flat rate electricity, right? Like it's just included in your dorm fees. Like if I was in college right now, I don't care about the whining noise, whatever. I would just I would just have shit ton of ASICs just sit in there. And actually uh the immersion cooling liquids, the price of that is getting driven down. So I'd imagine the next two to three years that it may actually be um pretty viable for a lot of people as as products that are focused on this use case particularly come to market. More competition drives down prices. Uh next guide from Bitcoin Q underscore A www.bitcoinqna.com uh, has a really straightforward 10-step tutorial on how to buy your first non-KYC Bitcoin on uh, BISC. So if you don't want to mine uh, to get non-KYC coins, you can use BISC. Uh, and this is a pretty straightforward 10-step tutorial with screenshots and um, explanations of what you need to do in a step-by-step fashion. So how to set up your first trade on BISC, and it's very beautiful. And his site is just dope, dope in general. I really like how he has it set up. He does have it set up like a Q&A. Uh, he reached out to me when he, he first launched his site, I think like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, something like that, and he wanted me to look over it. Uh, seems like a great dude. I like him. I like how he has it set up. There's a section that's just like foot gun things, like biggest mistakes that most people make great section it's a fantastic section everyone should check it out i just like that concept you know just like these are the mistakes we all fucking made uh don't make these don't make the same mistakes as us so that's bitcoin q and a.com q and a.com yeah the common mistakes to avoid page and on the bisque tutorial what i liked about it is he he like listed the trade-offs too so you have a full understanding of the trade-offs that come when engaging in different um Bitcoin buying services. Bitcoin buying services. I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, and another list. So if you're looking for P2P exchanges to use, there is a GitHub list going around uh, for P2P trading uh, exchanges, whether that be non-KYC or KYC. Includes shitcoin uh, exchanges as well. But um, it's, uh, it seems like a good source. There's yeah. some names some names on here I've never heard before, so I, I learned a little bit from it. So this was brought to my attention by Chris Belcher himself. Uh, just seems like a really good resource. I have overwhelming majority of them, as Marty said, I've never heard of and I've never used, but Chris posted it, and it does seem like a pretty solid list. And you have to realize with these things, like it does really matter where you're living and what you're – what jurisdiction you're in and stuff like that. So they'll always, it'll always be more complicated. Uh, It's on that privacy versus convenience trade-off scale, right? Where you're, 
if you want if you want to be more if you want to be more privacy conscious it's always going to be less convenient and you're going to have to do your research about it do your own research freaks we're here just providing links for you to verify what we're saying and figure this out for yourself um speaking of yourself matt are you gonna embed yourself via identity into the bitcoin blockchain via microsoft's decentralized id protocol is this what they're gonna run the chip off of (sighs) hey i don't have enough information on that i can't make an educated uh educated comment on that whether or not the chip will will connect to our ion i i i love daniel buckner who is running this project um this is microsoft's decentralized identity what is the third d d decentralized identifier it's called did d decentralized identifier something but the idea is to create a digital identity that is distributed i I don't like that they call it decentralized because it's not really fully decentralized nothing is but it's distributed and they're running this network and the whole thing backs into bitcoin so like if they're going to be putting chips into people and it's going to be your id at least it's at least it anchors into an immutable distributed chain right bitcoin like i i that's a benefit. That's cool. You know, I, I'm cool. <laughs> like, if you're going to do it, do it that way. That's the way to do it. Uh, but I'll remain I'll... skeptical. It's moving to mainnet. That's the announcement. It's moving to mainnet Bitcoin, anchored in Bitcoin blockchain. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe I'm the one saying this in this situation. Let's not belittle the work that Daniel and team have worked on. We have no idea. I'm not if, belittling. I, 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 I don't this... intend to. If this connects to the uh, the ID twenty twenty chip rumors going around. Who's the founder uh, of Microsoft? Bill Gates. There man. you go. There you go, Marty. Uh, but no, it is pretty cool. They have a sweet um, they have a sweet diagram in the announcement that sort of shows the flow of how they do it, and they have a bunch of local nodes that they run their ion nodes, and they basically just bat- batch a bunch of transactions and embed data into the bitcoin blockchain um we'll see uh i haven't how much all i'm saying is they could totally be running this thing on a private ethereum fork corporate blockchain bullshit and instead they're trying to make it as distributed as possible they're trying to allow you to have full control over your digital identity i'm doing quotations no one can see it um and and that that should be commended. That aspect should definitely be commended. Really good to see in that respect. Yeah, and I think with this too, you don't even have to technically connect your actual identity. It's just used as something similar to else or not else that or WebLN, where it's like a digital or just PGP. Password. You yeah. know, public private yeah. key cryptography. It just makes uh makes the user experience with API calls and stuff like that a lot easier. Um, apparently, we'll see though. Look, uh, the current system of using like a phone number and your social security number or something like that as your online identity can go fuck itself, right? So it's a very low bar. Let's let's be you know frank here. It's an extremely low fucking bar. So this is a, a major improvement in that regard, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they have for us. And it's it's always good to see shit go to mainnet because I don't really like paying attention until things go to mainnet. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time while everything fucking changes in between and maybe never launches. So it's good to see them ship. Yeah, I wonder how how this will affect the fee market. Like how much data are the transactions that are batching uh, using on average and adding to. The Bitcoin blockchain on average. Well, look, they're naturally incentivized to keep that data to as small as possible because otherwise their fees will get more expensive. Completely agree. Like, uh, uh, is it a, a floor, a fee floor? If they, they helping create a fee floor. Absolutely. If they want to help create a sustainable security for Bitcoin, I'm all for it. Let's go. Yeah. I am too. Um, Speaking of of big news, this isn't really big news, but it's big dick news. Uh, Three Arrows Capital, run by Suzu, 
uh, discloses that they own 6.25% of GPTC, which we mentioned earlier is now trading at a 40% premium. The spot price of Bitcoin, 37.9% right now as I speak. Um, it's a pretty ballsy move. It's a lot of uh, GBTC, especially considering that it trades at this premium. Um, it's, these guys are, are pretty Wait. confident in Bitcoin's uh, success in the future. I wouldn't say that. So first of all, the only reason they've disclosed it is because U.S. regulations dictates they have to disclose it over 5%. So it's public knowledge now because they passed the 5% threshold. The second thing is it is kind of ballsy in terms of GBTC is a fucking IOU and they're trusting that they'll get back the IOU. The reason it's not really truly ballsy is because we it is not confirmed, but this is most likely in-kind contributions where they are bringing Bitcoin into GBTC and getting GBTC shares. So they are automatically profiting from that premium, right? The, the, the whole mechanism in play there, because it's not a real ETF, is there's like a year delay while you do it. So if yeah, you can so get... they're not automatically profiting, right? They're basically... They, 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 there's a lock-in. Right, but they get that premium, right? The, 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 the play here is, and the block can't report it, because they refuse to speculate on these types of things. That's why we're here. Um, is, is, <laughs> in is, trouble is, for speculating last week. No, yeah, but I, I, most of the time I don't get in trouble for speculating because I'm right. They're, they're, they're doing this because they get that premium. They're arbitraging the premium, and you know that's fine. That's how the incentives are set up, and they can hedge they can hedge their Bitcoin exposure of going in there through shorts and, and other financial instruments uh, to protect themselves. So this is this is them banking on the fact that, first of all, there won't be a Bitcoin ETF anytime soon because if there's a true ETF, then the premium will drop because people will go to that ETF instead that doesn't have the premium. And and the second thing is they're trying to arbitrage this year. They're, they're trying to get that that thirty percent, twenty five percent, whatever the premium is at any given time. They're trying to get that 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 little gain. I mean, a major gain. It's let's, let's be honest. That's a yeah, that's a pretty big percentage. Sick arb, especially yeah. if Bitcoin goes up in price as well, and they're able to call that back from GPTC in some way. Uh, yeah, I mean. I think they'll probably be successful. That's what they're doing. I don't see an ETF coming to market anytime soon. I'm not holding my breath for that. Yeah, they're too busy. They're they're too busy creating fucking ETFs that are so good for investors to just protect investors, you know, with their triple leverage short ETFs that are like fucking screwing the Robin Hood crowd. But God forbid they, they put a Bitcoin ETF out there. Should we talk about the Robinhood crowd? What's going on in the stock market right now? Are we at a 2000 tech bubble level yet? When was the last time the stock market dropped 5% in a day? I don't know what it closed at. It closed a half an hour ago. You in wanna, March? Didn't you, it close like? You want to pull it up? Did we have a, a down 5% day before in March? I th- maybe. I, th- I want to be surprised. We were down, ooh, almost 6% in the S&P, 5.89%. Wow. Dow, Dow Jones was down 6.9%. 7% Russell's, is the circuit breaker. Uh, Dow Jones got really close to that. Well, apparently not. Russell 2000 got down. Well, maybe it's the circuit breaker for Dow Jones. Russell Russell's, is is Great Britain, though, is is UK. That, that was down uh, almost 8% at 7.58%. Um. So this idea of of getting angry at Robin Hood traders is fucking bullshit. OK, these people are getting fucked by the system. They they what are they supposed to do? They're going to keep their money in a checking account. We've talked about this a million times, right? Like the Cantillon effect, like the money comes in, it fucking props up the stock market. We have the majority of people aren't getting exposure to the stock market and all the people on Robinhood fucking figured this out. Like, are they investing in shit? Yeah, they're investing in shit. You know, they're they're going to learn by touching the stove. That's how they have to learn. But, you know, to see retail have a bigger presence in the stock market is, is it's a symptom of, of the rig system, right? Like, if we have yeah. Bitcoin, this is why Bitcoin is beautiful, because if we have Bitcoin, you don't have to have a 
bullshit diversified portfolio of equities and, and bonds and shit to try and outpace inflation. You could just hold Bitcoin, right? Like that's why sound money is important. But we're not there yet. Bitcoin's going through its adoption phase. It's hyper volatile in the short term. So people are just trying to figure out ways to 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 fucking get the money that they that they deserve, like get their portion of the money. Like this idea of like degrading Robinhood traders is absolutely bollocks. It's ridiculous. Bollocks. Wow, we're getting into some British there British you go. terminology there. Add that to uh, the bingo card, motherfuckers. I would push back a little bit. Like I'm I'm curious to see how much of this Robin Hood led rally in stocks because it is being led uh by the retail investors. Goldman Sachs had a call this week, earlier this week, in which they admitted they they witnessed uh like our Wall Street bets and, and retail traders on forums basically stop out shorts uh that were put in there by institutional investors. Power so, of the people. Let's go. The cab driver is the captain now look at me i'm the captain now but dude i wonder how much the dave portnoy effect has like he's a robin hood trader too like he's not trading on robin hood but well, he's part listen, of the same listen listen stop interrupting it's the 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 lack of sports betting that is available to people right now because of all these leagues being shut down like i'm like those are degenerate gamblers i wonder how much of that market has moved into the stock market uh, as sports are shut down and as somebody like Dave Portnoy who's a notorious sports gambler is sort of leading the charge of these day traders uh, 100% not, do not discount the Dave trader uh, the Dave Portnoy effect uh, I think he may single handedly have an effect on these markets uh, especially over the last couple of weeks I don't disagree with you the, all the sports gambler all the gamblers have moved have moved into and in, in moved into stocks let's be honest like they're gamblers they, they they're not gonna what are they gonna gamble on esports they're not gonna fucking gamble on esports of course they're gonna move into the fucking stock market like absolutely without a doubt and we saw did you see that clip of Portnoy it was like remnants of the 2017 fucking shitcoin bubble where he like he was trying to get a position in a stock and he mentioned it on the live stream and it just popped up. It was like an hundred percent. Yeah. It was like an illiquid piece of shit and it popped up while he was talking about it. And he was like struggling in his mind. He was like, Oh my God, did I do that? Is that illegal? I hope that wasn't illegal. What the fuck did I just do? Um, yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt, hundred percent agree with you, but still like this is a symptom, right? Do we agree that this is a symptom of the current system that we sit in? where like people have to speculate on this shit. Like there's the it, it's like we call them chumps if they don't, if they just keep it in their checking account and they get inflated away and they make what they're like 15 cents every quarter or whatever that pops up in your fucking bank account and then we call them chumps when they go into Robinhood and fucking buy Hertz. I mean, they're idiots for buying Hertz. Like it's a fucking bankrupt company, don't buy Hertz. Don't buy Nikola. You know, when it's a fucking <laughs> never produced a car whatsoever and took four million dollars in PPP funding because they couldn't survive the fucking uh, crisis. Like, but but still, at the same time, like, it's hard to blame them. It's really hard to blame them. And, it, you know, it is what it is. And this whole idea, I just want to say to the to the Bitcoin maximalists, like this idea that we won't see shit coin pumps. I hope this disproved it in your mind. Like people will speculate on illiquid shit like that is going to happen. It's going to happen for a long time in the future. And it is what it is. Long term, the shit will trend to zero in Bitcoin terms, whether that's hurt stock, whether that's fucking digibyte. It doesn't matter. It's all trending to zero long term in Bitcoin because Bitcoin's better money. Agreed. I mean, we've said that many times before much as it'll make you cringe and probably drive some some of you crazy uh the shit coins will probably pump again uh but again it's it's ephemeral and trying to and so the shit coins will pump this has happened in the past and you'll be like oh i'm missing out and you'll hop in thinking that you're missing out and you'll hop in at the wrong time or you'll hop in at a good time but you won't hop out at the right time and uh, it's a game of musical chairs that uh, is not a game for me anymore. I tried to play it in the past and got burned way too hard. Stay on stack folks. sets. Exactly. Um, this is pretty fucked up. Brave Browser 
auto completing websites with ref links. They did this with Binance. So is it like Brandon Binance, Ikes? Coinbase, Ledger, Trezor, Cold Card doesn't offer ref links, so they didn't do it with them. There's it was a bunch of bunch of Bitcoin focused sites. Yeah. Um, uh, they said it was a mistake. They said it was a mistake. It was not let's be honest, guys. It was not a mistake. And 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 my point here, they they reversed course when they got called out on it. So it is good that it's open source. People saw it right away in the code. Um, but there, first of all, besides the fact that this is unethical, it is, it is, it is a fingerprint for the browser, right? So you could it, anyone who was using the ref link, their ref link was a brave browser user. You knew they were a brave browser user all of a sudden you're reducing the anonymity set of those users. So this idea, this idea that a company like Brave, who has shown to be completely unethical in terms of monetization, can provide you a privacy-focused browser, it's, it's broken. It's not going to happen. Their, their incentives are broken. They're trying to make money off their users. And you just shouldn't be using Brave. Like I, I, I was a little bit more fair with them earlier. I said, you know, just ignore the token. You can disable it in the in the settings. It's like a decent enough browser. But really, at the end of the day, you should either be using a privacy-focused fork of Chrome, one of the Chromium forks. Uh, that's the open source component of Chrome without the Google shit. Or Firefox with the DNS enabled, disabled. They, they <laughs> Blue Matt, Matt Corallo is is big on this, is... is They've been defaulting lately to they run their DNS lookups through Cloudflare. Fuck Cloudflare. They're man in the middle by design, probably working with governments. So you got to, if you use Firefox, you got to disable that. Why does there have to be so much nuance with this shit? Why do we have to explain all the trade offs every time we talk about this shit? But just keep that in mind with Firefox. So much nuance. Be aware. Um, <sighs> we're over an hour. Let's keep going. Uh, China is cracking down on OTC traders. They've frozen the bank accounts of many traders who've been trading over the counter over there. So it seems like uh, another tremor in uh, in China and how the CCP is posturing towards Bitcoin. We know via announcements they've made in the last six months that they're working on their own central bank digital currency. We'll see what happens there. Just be aware, China has canceled and banned Bitcoin many times in the past, only to come back and allow it again. So it's never very clear what's coming out of there and what will happen moving forward. But just a, a shot across the bow, if you will, to to the OTC traders there. Again, they, they froze their bank accounts. Um, this is extra important because I'm in mainland China, OTC is the only way to go, uh, legally speaking. Um so, so they are going after the OTC traders, and they're they're saying it's money laundering. That money laundering is happening, whether that's on the Bitcoin side. Sometimes they blame the Bitcoin side. Sometimes they blame the fiat side. But regardless, they're going after all these these OTC traders over the counters. What OTC stands for? It's like they're doing personal trades um, for clients and for themselves sometimes, uh, and it's just. You know, this is this is where the friction happens, right? This is where regulators can hit you is is where fiat meets Bitcoin. And it's just a concern that everyone should be on, on the top of their mind as they're trying to coordinate their strategy to stack as many sats as possible. Yes, it could happen at any moment. That's why it's important to take possession of your keys and it's actually pertinent for Americans too. The Pentagon's thinking about Bitcoin. They came out with a war game. Z Bellion. They're very scared. Z Bellion. Of Gen of Gen Z. The Intercept came out with an article. Uh, they got their hands on a document that basically laid out a scenario which Gen Z, of which we are not a part of. We are millennials. At least Matt and I are. Uh, Gen Z is expected to revolt against the system. And Bitcoin will play a part, and it doesn't make any sense how Bitcoin plays a part. Uh, they're going to use all the <laughs> cybersecurity vulnerabilities they can to suck Bitcoin out of the system, which doesn't really make any sense. No, they're sucking fiat out of the system, and then they're converting it to Bitcoin. They're yeah. distributing the Bitcoin in this war yeah. game. Just to keep in mind, this seems very similar to the current crisis we're in right now. 
So they actually, they were game this, but they were a little bit off on timing, right? Because I think this current crisis is primarily led by young millennials and Gen Z. Yeah, I was actually a bit, I felt shafted. Like, they're giving Gen Z all the credit here. And well, Embellion with- doesn't sound that good. No, it doesn't. Millennabellion? Millennabellion? When you hear no. Z-Bellion, you just think zombies, right? Yeah, yeah. But, like, the one part of the document is like Gen Z like grew up with nine 11 and uh, they were coming of age during nine 11 and the great financial crisis shit that happened to us too. I was, they didn't though. Right. Like, I was 10 when nine 11 happened. Yeah. I don't like, think Gen Z grew up with nine 11. They grew up with nine 11 no. in their history books. Right. Yeah, exactly. So somebody at the Pentagon just wanted the Z bellion name and really shafted us millennials. <laughs> this is our revolution. This- you, you Gen Z come join us. Uh, we're not going to, I don't, I don't see us cyber attacking, uh, shitty, uh, websites that hold money on them. I don't see how that would work. This whole war game is the plot of Mr. Robot. Someone (laughs) at the Pentagon watched Mr. Robot and they came up with this war game. It is, it's, it's literally the, it's literally the plot of, of fucking Mr. Robot, which if you freaks haven't watched, you should watch. It's, it's a fun show. I like that Bitcoin's involved. Um, but, but the important thing here, I think is that Bitcoin's on the radar and in terms of Bitcoin being a threat, being a, a non-government money that is out of their control, they, they overestimate the ability to use it privately because it's, as we've said on this pod many times, is way too difficult to use privately. And you, and you guys need to be very active in trying to learn how to use it privately. But this is the plot of, of Mr. Robot. Yeah. I mean, and if this is what's going on, this is like top of the line research at the Pentagon. We're fucked. They're way behind. Like the one, se- the one sentence, uh, Gen Z are often described as seeking independence and opportunity, but are also among the least likely to believe that there's such thing as the American dream and that the system is rigged against them. Frequently seeing themselves as agents for social change, they crave fulfillment and excitement in their job to help move the world forward. Like you're describing what's going on right now with like millennials and Gen Z. Like this is happening now, like you said. Their timeline's way off Pentagon. But this is 2018. They did this war game in 2018, right? So ah. people have to keep in mind, like we only know about this now because the Intercept did a freedom of information request. What are the war games they're doing right now? What are the lists they're doing right now? We know during the migrant crisis a year ago, they were putting journalists on lists. They were putting activists on lists based off of that they are absolutely putting bitcoiners on lists like this is something that it it matters like people need to fucking care about this shit because it at the end of the day i know my goal is to is to have as much bitcoin as possible that is my goal and it's unfortunate like your government should not be in your threat model like we pay their fucking salaries but they are in your threat model and you have to keep this shit in mind yeah, your tax dollars are being paid uh, to do research and game plan about how to uh, put you down if you ever try to actually stand up against the government and tell them that they need to work on your behalf. Uh, that's weird. Hey, why do we pay taxes? Mr. Hoddle's been asking that question a lot. Why are we paying taxes? I'm not going to comment on that. But you, I, see what's, you see what's going on in in Seattle right now? Before we get to that, I just want to say one more thing here uh, is, I, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought. It was, yeah. it was, it was a good thing though. What are you going right, to do? Well, let's move, let's move to the Seattle Autonomous Zone. Chaz, as it's commonly referred to. Uh, it's been a sight to be seen over the last few days. Uh, some miscreants in Seattle have uh, blocked off a portion of the city and they're running it autonomously. They took over the police department and the police left. So they're within this area in Seattle and they're running it. And it has been hilarious to watch, uh, unfold. It is a very interesting micro experiment on, on what, uh, might happen if the, uh, the people who want to bring communism to America are successful. I'm not too worried about it. If Chaz is there, 
uh, any leading indicator of what uh, it will look like and the dysfunction that it will bring. So apparently there was a leader that uh, lasted two days and then he had to resign uh, because, or she, I forget, um, uh, was basically outed as a domestic abuser and then uh a rapper has My taken power over just went out we're good we're good i've just been explaining the uh the chaz uh getting to the point where the rapper uh and his uh what's his name z zim forget his name but him and his cronies have taken over and they are the warlords of chaz right now uh, i saw a video eric voskule Funnily enough, it, it seems that he lives on the border of Chaz. Probably like the person who probably hates this the most. Actually, I don't know. Does he hate VJ it? VJ lives know. in Chaz. Yeah. VJ Boyapati's in. No, he he used to live there. I, I thought think he, he said this is my neighborhood on Twitter. That's why yeah, I'm think, not doxing him. He said it. No, I think he said it's the neighborhood I used to live in. Uh, I'm pretty okay. sure. Imagine if you owned a small business there. Like right. you just had to deal with all this shit and now you have to deal with this. And well, it, again, like I. Well, I was saying, you probably didn't hear me because I didn't hear shit. Out a little My bit. power went out. It was hilarious. Uh, if this is any leading indicator of what's to come from like the socialists who want to bring socialism to America, uh, it is going to fail miserably. They've had leader, leadership changes. Uh, the homeless people stole the food. Uh, the uh, cops are back in. Apparently, they're, I think they're taking over the police station again. And it's hilarious. These people want to act like they're actually doing something tangible and something that will be long lasting. But like the city of Seattle, what if they just like shut down power to that neighborhood and shut down water? Like they're still under the control of the state. Well, the only reason Chaz exists is because is that what they're calling it? Chaz? Why are they calling it Chaz? It stands for something. I don't know. Autonomous zone. Something, something Hill, Chilton Hill or something like that. Oh, okay. Fair. Uh, I mean, the only reason this shit exists is because they don't have the balls to actually stop it, right? Like, the police have completely backed off. The mayor has lost complete control. Well, dude, it's... Nobody has fucking balls anymore. Like, there's Personal again, responsibility like we, is lacking. There's, there's so much nuance to all this. Yes, police brutality is terrible. It should be curbed. Defunding whole police forces and abolishing police forces is one of the dumbest fucking things I could think of like just whip these cops into shape and hopefully we can transition to private security forces slowly over time. But to think that you're just going to create a vacuum where police don't exist and chaos doesn't break out is asinine. And there are, there are ways to do this level headedly. Like and polls have come out. It's crazy how much this has become a meme over the last week and a half alone, abolish the police. Like nobody was saying this two weeks ago, and yet now it's like one of the biggest policy, uh, policy, uh, wants of whatever this far left movement that's taking over the narrative right now once. And if you look at the polls, something like 68% of Americans would not want police departments to be abolished in any way, shape or form. Wait, here. So I remembered what I was going to say, but I'll talk about that in a second. They, I used to say that Twitter lacked nuance, but society really is what lacks nuance, you know, and we've gone straight to defund the police. Really, it should be more accountability, uh, higher, like this, the hiring standards should be higher, right? Like right now, it's like almost lowest rung. It's like if you can't find another job, you can become a police officer. Like the hiring standards should be higher. We should have accountability. Um, we should pay them more. They get paid dirt cheap, you know, like in if you, if we add accountability standards, we add the increased hiring standards, all these different things, um, then all of a sudden, yes, they should absolutely be getting paid more. Like they, they have difficult jobs and they get paid fucking dirt cheap. Like people don't realize, like, yes, elites control the state. Our system is broken. They, they, it is legal to buy politicians in this country. Um, the police are an extension of that. They're the extension that we touch, that people see the most, right? And, and 
we we need to absolutely reform it. But if if you just if if we have no police in in, in let's say New York in in a city of we have De Blasio's wife is gone saying that it'll be Nirvana in New York without any kind of NYPD. Like that is ridiculous. Like then you just have armed armed thugs walking around, which we kind of already do. Let's be honest. There's a lot of power hungry cops, but like. Like no matter what, you end up with armed thugs going around. So we need that, accountability. We there's there's a middle ground here it happened, that needs to happen. There's nuance. There's fucking nuance. Like I said, it's hilarious. Ch- Chaz is a leading indicator of all this. They have warlords who have taken over within three days. And warlords are giving be, them too much credit. It's I mean they wish they were warlords. In that little in that little they're warlords of that little three block radius, whatever it is. Did you see the leader committed suicide because he beat his girlfriend over Yeah, I mentioned transphobic that. I mentioned comments. That. Oh, I missed that because my I power went that. out. No, it wasn't transphobic comments. I think the leader might have been a a a, a, a um see now I'm like serial abuser. That, but like also like what's the what's the PC word? A transvestite. Is that still kosher? Oh, these you days? cannot say that. No. Um, I, it, transgender. Transgender. There we go. Um, <laughs> my bad. But uh, I don't know. Welcome the, to TFTC. Yeah. The uh, the uh, the story around whether or not the original leader. Uh, it's still coming so, out. We don't really know. It's still coming out. But yeah. yeah, she was a an abuser. He abused. A, a lover in the past i think i think got out the, pretty quickly the appropriate gender was he that's what he wanted to be called if he was transgender i think it might have been she we're go- okay whatever we're getting into the weeds too much what i forgot to say about z bellion was that we don't know what their response was we just know what the war game was the response is still confidential it wasn't included in the freedom of information act so that response is more relevant to us as Bitcoiners. I, that response is heavy-handed as fuck. It is, it is, it is databasing using Coinbase spy tools, etc., to go after Bitcoiners to try and prevent that kind of attack. And they've been thinking about this since 2018. I do not want to know what the evolved situation is in this year in 2020. It's bad. They've had a, they've had a lot more to worry about. Hopefully, they've been distracted. Um, but back to Chaz, it's going to be hilarious. They have warlords in, in control now of that little radius. They're going to create a police force within the next week. I imagine they're going to go full circle to kicking the police out and then, and then creating their own police force within the confines of Chaz. Can we just talk about how shitty of a store of value real estate is? Like imagine you own a building there. Like it's so much better to own Bitcoin. Like it's, like, do we even need to talk about it anymore? Does it does it need, like, it's clearly a better store of value than real estate. Like, why are you spending millions of dollars on a building? This is like primo area of, of Seattle. It's primo. And imagine trying to get insurance now. Like, your insurance is expired. First of all, the insurance companies aren't going to pay out shit. But you need it anyway because we live in a litigious society. So the insurance premiums are probably going through the fucking roof. It's a horrible store of value. Yeah. Uh, I would not want to be holding the shit coin of real estate in Seattle right now. It's not uh, shit coin. It was like the Bitcoin of real estate. Like the maximalists of, of Seattle real estate were like, oh, well, you got to own in whatever CH area is. Like that's well, the that, best. Look how quickly that flipped. Yeah. And it's sort of disgusting to see all like the, the spray painting going on. You're just... Just really destroying neighborhoods and beauty. I'm trying to be respectful. The I'm, world's going mad. I'm cool with Sorry. the classy, the classy, the classy graffiti school. But yeah, the, I'm cool with that. Just like the, the tags. Fuck the tags. And these people are like tagging things they don't even understand. Did you see in Boston the the first yeah. infantry, the first all black infantry mural, uh, mural or was it racist? It, was? it must have been racist. Well, no. They, I'm they, smiling, like, freaks. You can't. They, see defa- me. they defaced it, and it's like an homage to the first all-black army infantry. You want to talk yeah. about statues? Uh, I mean, again, I don't agree with the Confederacy and slave owners <laughs> just using heuristics here. This is exactly what ISIS did when they rolled into Syria. They started destroying 
uh, statues and stuff. And I think there have been uh, proposals for moving statues to more museum areas. I think statues, like how many cool statues do you see that get made these days? Like, again, the Fiat Society, the Fiat Standard has got us away from creating beautiful things like statues. My favorite um, was, all I'm going to say is my favorite was they were... Uh, there's like a bunch of calls to remove Churchill statues from Great Britain. And someone posted on Twitter, wait till they find out about the other guy. And I right? just thought that was great. It's and, like, uh, yeah. So there was a Thomas Sowell quote going around today. And that's what really pisses me off about all of this. It's like, all right, that should happen in the past. What's in the past is in the past. It was terrible. We, we are learning from it. We have learned from it. Hopefully we get better over time. The arc of history has gotten better in my opinion people have become more accepting uh more liberal and more cooperative this is pretty much evidence through all economic indicators and the productivity of the technology we have today last five decades shit has gone haywire uh in the economic sphere in the monetary sphere due to the fed predominantly but this thomas sewell quote like have we reached the ultimate stage of absurdity where some people are held responsible for things that happened before they were born while other people are not held responsible for what they themselves are doing today. Like all this, all this focus on these statues and all these, this focus on abolishing the police, like gone with the wind, people are gone with the wind. People are striking at branches when they're not, nobody's focused on the money. Nobody's pointed at the fed or the, the creation of money in our system, which is the core of all these problems. And actually nobody's identified the true problem. They're screaming, destroying stuff indiscriminately and it's not i don't think it's very productive maybe some people do i don't think it's very productive i just thought these statues were bolted down i didn't realize you could just push them over this whole time well it's just, it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of effort um Should yeah we... sorry for you sorry for using the the uh the wrong term there earlier. For <laughs> He's still thinking about it. You, th- you can't edit I, it honestly, out. You can't edit it out. Oh, I'm not going to. I was, it was a genuine uh, brain fart there. I'm sorry. He didn't. He didn't mean anything by it. He didn't mean Did anything not. negative by it. Um, well, somebody who is talking about solutions, but Bitcoin is one of them. This is why we Bitcoin. Is uh, his video went viral uh, this week? He was at the LA protest. At I am character. Is it I am the character? I think it's I am the character uh, on Twitter. I thought it was he, I am character. He gave a impassioned speech. Um, oh, it's I am the character. You're correct. I apologize. Um, he gave an impassioned speech at the protest in LA, the peaceful protest, explaining how Bitcoin is an option to opt out of the system and it is a very productive way to voice your opinion topped out and then it was actually a three-part plan bitcoin being the first part and then volunteer in your community that's uh that's why owls lacrosse is what we support here at this podcast because it's an incredible way to volunteer somewhere i volunteered and got a lot of value volunteering um it's one thing that sort of pisses me off about all the larping that's been going on is a bunch of people have never actually gone into neighborhoods and and worked with these communities or experienced these communities just LARPing online, like get out there and actually go, go do something like go volunteer for owls or any other program like it that's in your city. And it, you actually will be rewarded handsomely just with a perspective on life. It's, it's powerful getting out there and leading by example and volunteering in your community can actually go a long way. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. I've heard good things about the episode. I have not listened to it yet, but um, based on who has told me that it was a great episode, you should go listen to it. It seems like he's, you know, he's Bitcoin Twitter. Like he's he's completely red pilled. He runs a Raspi Blitz. Um, I fucking love it. It's good to see. Uh, his speech was fucking powerful. So that's fucking awesome. Extremely um, powerful. And as Marty said, that's I am the character on Twitter. I said I am character. That was incorrect. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to point out is that Signal, the encrypted messaging service, has posted a blog um, about their core principles and design philosophy. It's, it's a good, nice, short read. 
Um, if you're not running Signal, you should run Signal. Is it compromised by the U.S. government? Maybe. Probably not, but maybe that's up there. You know, you're better off using PGP. But it's easy to use. No one has any excuse not to use it. Way better than sending plain text messages. There you go. Yes. Um, and the third part of I Am The Character's three-point plan was voting, to Vote at the local level. And I think voting at the local level has more impacts than voting in federal elections. And then you don't believe in voting, Marty. I don't. But Brian Harrington actually did help convince me that getting involved in local politics actually does have an impact. I always vote. It's important. Um, I don't think it makes that much change, but I do it anyway because I can and because you should. Um, to the point where I will, I, I change, I change my affiliation just to vote in the primary that is the more important primary of every, of every election, just to just to get my voice heard a little bit more. But I, 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 I don't think that's really how you accomplish change. Like at this point, it is our politicians are legally bought and paid for, and uh, yeah, that sucks. But it is I vote what it by, is. I vote by stacking sets. That's the ultimate. It's the um, ultimate vote. And taking custody yeah. and running your own node and using CoinJoin and all this fucking other shit. Using encryption, it's important. It's very important. One step at a time. Get your feet wet and uh, do one thing, then do another. And it'll snowball into tendencies and practices that you'll wake up one day and be like, holy shit, I'm pretty self-sovereign. We're an hour and a half in now. I think we're good, right? Yeah, yeah. We got another parody account this week. Marty's Owl popped up out of nowhere. That's you. Let's be honest. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't have enough time to make any of these parody accounts. Um, Whoa. He's, com- he's he coming thought. at you, Marty's Owl. He's coming at you, whoever's behind it. I wonder. Um, Take him I down. Wonder, I wonder uh, what he'll, my hoot score will be this week. Haven't recorded the ad yet. Dude, your hoots are fucking shitty. They just fallen off a cliff, man. They were so good in the beginning, and you're just getting lazy about it. It's just, it's a perfect example of just human laziness. Is really what it no, is. No, no, I'm trying to, to really represent all owls as much as possible. Not every owl hoot is identical from, uh, not spe- species, species of owl. Or type yeah, of owl. I've, I mean, recently you've been specializing in like distressed, sick owls. I feel like they they got to be represented too. You know, <laughs> they, they exist. <laughs> um, all right, freaks. If you're liking this, please uh, give us a follow, a subscription on your favorite uh, podcast app. Rate, review if you feel so inclined. That goes a long way. If you want to get a shout out. Uh, on the podcast tftc.io slash contribute and thank you guys for listening this is a long rip i am ron burgundy (laughs) peace and love freaks